Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining for our monthly Q&A session presented by GiveCloud Support and Trust Raising. My name is Kimberly and I'm a customer success advocate here at GiveCloud. And when I'm not hosting webinars, I am usually in our chats and emails answering all your wonderful questions. So thanks so much for joining. If you have any questions today during the session, please use the Q&A box down in the bottom right hand corner of your Zoom screen, and we'll definitely take a look at those at the end of our session. I'm so lucky today to be joined by my colleague, Dan, who's our enablement lead here at GiveCloud. Hi, Dan. Uh, and in today's session, we're going to cover preparing for Giving Tuesday. Let us help you start preparing and making this the best Giving Tuesday ever. So in this session, let me just switch over my slide here. We're going to uh, review our recommendations for best practices when it comes to campaigns. We're going to explore fundraising forums and how you can, um, well, how they can help create a really great online experience for your next campaign. And then we're going to, of course, at the end, do our Q&A session. So again, feel free to use that QA box to add your questions below. So now let's jump in and get this party started. if I could go to the correct slide. There we go. Excellent. So Giving Tuesday is an internationally recognized day to support nonprofits and charities, and it will be soon upon us. I mean, we know these next few months are just going to fly by. As a nonprofit, it's important to start planning for the big day today, hence why you're here. According to Vox Future Proof, despite the pandemic and economic crisis, donations hit a record high in 2020, Giving Tuesday reporting that a total giving in the US alone reached $2.4 billion, a 25% increase over 2019, and almost 35 million people participated. That's pretty amazing. By starting now, you'll be uh, you'll have the time to determine and identify your purpose for your campaign, craft your story that you'll share with your supporters, identify that audience you want to target, and create a plan for you and your team leading up to the big day. So let's get started and talk about each of those steps. To start, make sure your nonprofit has identified the reason why you are raising money during Giving Tuesday. Once you understand your why, you can start creating campaign goals for your Giving Tuesday campaign. An example of your why could be fundraising for an evergreen program within your community or for a specific need like a natural, uh, a natural disaster, disaster response. Um, if you're not sure how to get your team organized around specific goals and objects, uh, objectives, um, just keep it simple. My colleague, Sarah, who is probably one of our most organized geniuses here at GiveCloud, likes to think of goals like a delicious cake. To make the cake, which is that big goal, so in your case, it's gonna be Giving Tuesday, we need to determine the ingredients, so the milestones that will get you to that goal. That's how you can create those objectives and goals. <laughs> so a great example that Sarah likes to use is the cake is fundraising for a breakfast program for local schools. The ingredients would be you need to raise 50K for supplies and healthy food. I hope that helps a little bit. Now, once you've figured out your goals and objectives, it's good to start thinking about your story when it comes to your campaign. With any campaign, it's, we really do recommend starting with that story. The story you share to your supporters is what's gonna give them that sort of connection and compel them to give to your organization. A great exercise we recommend is to write one sentence that tells the story behind your Giving Tuesday campaign, then add one more sentence, then maybe a paragraph, then maybe two paragraphs. Just helps to get that ball rolling. All the material that you create can be foundational to the overall story for your Giving Tuesday campaign. And then you can use bits and pieces of it um, in your communication and marketing materials to share with your supporters. Next, who are you going to advertise to or who's going to be your audience for your Giving Tuesday campaign? The more you know about your audience and the audience you want to reach, during your market for your marketing for Giving Tuesday, the more you can craft your messaging and how you want to speak and interact 
with them uh, based on the campaign. Sorry, incoming kitty if you see a cat come in. How you approach each audience might be a little bit different. And understanding each one a little bit better may help you frame how you do your communications um, when it comes to your Giving Tuesday campaign. So, for example, your, you know, the people who you always ask for donations, that might be existing donors um, or new donors. There, how you speak with them is going to be very, very different than maybe when you're trying to recruit and spread the word or have folks that you want to spread the word on behalf for you. So those are people that may be uh, doing peer to peer fundraising for you or social media advocates. And then again, another example would be um, if you are reaching out to people who are going to ask on your behalf. So uh, local news outlets, social media influencers, there may be different ways that you want to communicate with them or how they communicate your Giving Tuesday campaign. Now, lastly, you want to make sure that you craft a timeline. This is both good for marketing, but also just to keep your team organized. When building your timeline, don't just consider the big day, right? You want to also consider what your team is going to do leading up to the campaign, during the campaign, and of course, at the end of the Giving Tuesday campaign. For all campaign marketers, prepping all your copy and images with this timeline in mind can help you uh, stay organized and have all your marketing assets uh, ready and available. It helps you create a strategy. Honestly, we do know that as organized as you may be, um, there will still be things rushed at the last minute. That's just life. But of course, the more you can do in advance, the more time you'll be able to have with your supporters during that wonderful Giving Tuesday time. And to show you how you can actually use Give Clouds to fundraising forms for your Giving Tuesday campaign, I'm going to pass it over to my friend Dan to show you how you can do that. Awesome. Thanks, Kimberly. That's great info to help strategize and plan for a Giving Tuesday campaign. Now, let's chat about fundraising forms. So you need to be able to convert the attention that you've generated through your marketing strategy into fundraising. And Give Cloud's new, fund, new giving forms are the perfect solution for that. So let me share my screen here. If, uh, can I get access to share, please? There we go. Here we go. Can we see that okay? <clears throat> awesome. All right. So why use, in, uh, why use GiveCloud's new giving forms? So, you know, if you joined us last month when our CEO Josh presented and walked through the new giving forms in detail, um, you would have seen the power and the, the donor first experience of these forms. So be sure to check it out on our onboarding.givecloud.com website. Um, and we'll put a link in the chat. Um, if you missed the last session, you, you can view it. But let's have a look at the new forms on, on gift notes. So let me just click donate to pull up the form. Here we go. Awesome. So the new fundraising forms offer, you know, simple setup. They're designed mobile first, increase conversions, a quicker way for your supporters to donate online. And it's all an experience that your donors will love with features like social proof. You can see it coming from the top here which promotes the fear of missing out and encourages donors to donate using Apple Pay and Google Pay um, for quick donations without filling out any form fields, a strong transparency promise that uh, connects to both the intellect and the heart of your, of your donors, upsells to convert one-time donors to recurring all within a simple click of a button, um, email opt-ins to grow your email and marketing list, and all of this is fully embeddable on your website with no redirects, whether it's your, you know, your Give Cloud site or your main website, which is WordPress or whatever it is outside of Give Cloud, you can embed this experience on, on that site. You know, at Give Cloud, we believe that when your supporters love the giving experience, they'll give more, they'll give quicker, they'll give more frequently, and they're likely to tell their friends about it. All of these add up to more dollars for your cause. Now let's dive into a quick demo. So first of all, I'm gonna hop into Give Cloud Admin here, and I'm gonna to go to settings in my organization. And there are two new panels here. There's this FAQ panel, and then there's legal and privacy. So you wanna fill out the info in both of these panels as 
This info will be, will be surfaced in a user-friendly way at strategic points through the giving process to ensure your supporters feel safe and to ensure your org is compliant with a number of payment and privacy requirements. So be sure to fill out both panels as best as you can. Now, let me show you what that looks like on the giving form. So if I pull back up my form here on this first screen where I can choose my amount and payment method and so on, there's the FAQ and the privacy and legal down here. So if I click on FAQ, it pulls it up. It's, it's all within the form, right? I'm not being carried somewhere else. Um, and here's that information that's available for your supporters, you know, while they're checking out if they need this additional information about the FAQ or privacy and, and legal. Next, so let's, so after you, you, you fill these two sections out, um, now let's go into fundraising. This is a new menu item um, in the left menu here, fundraising. Now, this is where your new fundraising forms will live. You can see a list of their forms here and you can click a uh, new form in the top right here to create a new form. But for this example, we're going to click on my Giving Tuesday form. So when you click into it here, you're first brought to a dashboard where you're seeing some stats about the health of your fundraising form, right? The total revenue, the views, conversions, and number of donors. There's also some options on the right here to, uh, to promote or share your fundraising form as well. You can copy your link, promote a QR code, or embed a button. Actually, let me show you what these different um, things look like. So uh, with your forms, you can either send your donors directly to your fundraising form, as it is here. So every fundraising form has a link, and you can send people directly to this link. Um, and here you can see the background image, um, and the form experience here kind of lives in this. The other option though, is to embed it in a, a link or a button. So right here, I've created a landing page for Giving Tuesday. Now this is an example um, page. And here we have strategically placed some donate now button. So we put one up here and we've put one down here as well. And when you click donate now, this pop-up opens up on the page. So not carrying them away from your landing page, right? And this, this landing page could be on your main website. It could be on your cloud site but it keeps them within the experience that they're in. So if it's on your main website, they're not being carried away to some other site, right? This, this is living on your, on your main website. And let's leave that. Awesome. So, okay, back to, back to, our, to editing our form. So the options to, to copy and embed are here. Now, if I click these three buttons in the top right, we have some additional settings, right? We have some donor perfect settings, which may look familiar to a lot of you. Um, then you have options to report on this fundraising form, so contributions and supporters towards it. And then options again to share, embed, and um, get a QR code. But then also the option to clone or duplicate this form. So when you're creating a new form, you don't have to start from scratch. Just duplicate the existing one that you know that works and just switch out the things that are needed. Um, on that form. Awesome. Now, if you hover over the, uh, the preview here, that customize button shows up and that's it customized to edit our form. And immediately we're brought into the editing mode of this form. So you see your screen is taken over and you know exactly what it is you're doing here. So there are a couple steps in here to customize your form. So first is template and branding. You wanna give your form a name and you want to add your logo and select a theme color. Now, this is done on a form by form basis. So if you create another form, you can add, you know, a different variation of your logo, maybe choose a different color. It all depends on the campaign that you're running, right? So you may have a specific color for your Giving Tuesday campaign versus another campaign that you're running throughout, throughout the year as well. Once you've set up your template and branding, then you're going to go to customize form. Now, to customize the form, there are four main screens. There's a donation screen, upsell screen, email opt-in, and the thank you screen. And this is kind of broken up into the storyboard of the donors of your donor's journey as they're, um, as they're donating. So let's have a look at what that looks like um, for your donors. So I'm going to pull up. So here I have the form pulled up. Let me just refresh that in here. And um, this is this first screen here is the donation screen. So that's this first screen here. And I'm going to choose my amount. I'm going to say today only. And I'm going to choose to donate with Apple Pay. So I'm going to click that. And that's it. My donation is done already. 
Here's a, here's a confirmation that I get on the screen. And now I'm brought to the upsell screen, which is this screen here. So this provides your donors the opportunity if they've given one time to upgrade their giving to a monthly donation instead. So in this instance, I'm gonna hit no thanks. Then I'm brought to the email opt-in screen, this screen here, where we have the option to, for our donors to opt-in to receive email communication from us. We want, we want them to be added to our marketing lists, right? So we can click that or hit no thanks. And if you hit no thanks, there's a confirmation. Are you sure you don't wanna receive updates? Okay, let's say no thanks there. And then you're brought to the thank you screen, which is this last screen here. Now let's chat about some of the elements on the screen. So the donation screen, first of all, social proof at the top, um, that encouragement for your donors, you know, as they're viewing the donation form, they're seeing other people are also giving, that's going to encourage them to donate as well. Next, we have the amount down here. Now there's two options. There's automatic or custom. Custom meaning you can set what that amount is. So when someone goes to the form for the first time, What's that default amount that's populated there? The other option and the one that we recommend is automatic. So GiveCloud has some technology, you know, some, uh, some machine learning that's analyzing hundreds of thousands of donations across different ge geographies, devices, and other data points where we're able to predict within a certain amount of assurance how much someone might be willing to give. The machine learning will then generate that amount that'll push that number just slightly. So we highly recommend using automatic, um, leaving this as automatic if you want to maximize the amount that you're fundraising. Remember, donors always have the ability to change the amounts. So we can, they can go up, they can go down. And as you, as you go up, um, as, you, as there, you take certain actions on this form, you're going to see these subtle like um, animations and transitions. So like when I click um, plus, we get those hearts. Or if I um, upgrade my fees to most costs, I'm going to get those hearts there. Or um, if I'm on today only and I click the monthly, you know, just kind of reinforcing that um, uh, those actions that we'd, we'd really like people to take when, when they're on our fundraising form. So where are we? Um, so, okay, so that's the amount. And then there's a transparency promise. Um, you want to you wanna provide something here that uh, really gives that transparency to your donors about how their funds will be used. You know, people appreciate that. Um, okay, so that's your donation screen. Now uh, let's move to the upsell screen. And here you can customize that messaging that shows up here. So, um, oh, and by the way, as, as you're editing the form, um, realize that uh, whenever you click into a field, that section is highlighted on the preview over here. So you know exactly what part of the, the screen or the form you're, you're editing. And you can even click on these sections on the preview and that will um, bring your cursor there to edit that section of the page. So really easy for, for editing and knowing exactly what, what you're doing uh, as you're doing it. Next to the email opt-in screen. And again, you can update that messaging on here as well. Click on there to see the sections that, that, you, that you're editing. And then you're brought, and then your donors are brought to the thank you screen um, where it's automatically personalized. So donors name go in there, um, the donors names go in there, and then you can uh, provide a on-screen message um, that, that they can see. Awesome. So once you're done on the customized form um, tab, we're gonna click over to sharing and page view. And here you can define, you know, what the preview to your fundraising forum looks like. Now, um, in, in, in this age that we live in, you know, everyone's sharing every, on social media, by messaging, email, and there shouldn't be any guesswork as to, you know, what your forms look like or what pages look like when they're being shared, right? And that's why we give you the ability to actually customize that. So here you can say what the title is going to be what the description is going to be and what that preview image is that's going to be that's going to show up when you when you share it on Facebook or, or Twitter and, and, and so on. Now, uh, you can also uh, provide a background image for your form. So uh, uh, let's just go back to what I showed earlier where kind of the two ways of taking people to that form, right? It can be embedded on a landing page like this. So someone clicks donate now and that kind of pops up there and there's no background image here. But if you take someone directly to your form, then they get this kind of beautiful full with experience where, you know, that background image can also help tell your story and can also help engage people to, to also give as well. 
So the setting for background image refers to the background image behind here. Awesome. Now, uh, when you're finished your sharing and page view, we're gonna hop into email. Okay, so here you can customize the content of the thank you email that your donors receive when they've donated through this specific form. So this is on a form by form basis. Um, the new fundraising forms will not use the traditional email templates in um, the left menu, right? So um, a lot of here are used to give cloud and uh, let me just hop over there. Just wait, this is Claire. So you're, you're used to these emails and communicate all audit emails. But for these new fundraising forms, um, the email templates available in there will not be used. Instead, um, uh, we have a fresh, clean, simple new email template um, that will be sent as a thank you uh, when someone's donated through these fundraising forms. Um, now, I have an example here to show you what that looks like. Right, here we go, a screenshot. So, uh, as you can see, you know, clean and simple logo at the top, personalized with, with a name. Now, there are some mandatory things that we need to include in an email, right? Um, we, we have to let donors know, you know, how much was processed on, on what payment method and even provide an authorization code. But then there's an optional thank you message at the bottom. We are grateful for your support that you can customize. And back on to the form editor, that's the part of the email that you're, oops, that you're customizing right there. There you go. We're grateful for your support. Awesome. Now, when you're done, you're going to hit save in the top right. And then we're going to close this out. And now you're ready. You're ready to click copy to copy your link and send it to your marketing person. You're ready to print out a QR code and share it with your community. You're ready to copy the embed code to add it to your website or send it to your web person so that they can, they can put it in. You know, there are a number of ways that can, you can use these three options to convert the, the story being told, you know, the attention being created into retained revenue. Again, you want to turn that attention that you're generating through your campaigning and your marketing, you want to uh, convert that into retention through fundraising. Now, we'll provide a link with steps to set up and customize the new fundraising forms um, in the chat there. Um, and, but that's, but you can all, that's also available in our help desk um, and you can easily find it. So together with our new fundraising forms, we've also launched DCC AI Plus. I know a lot of you probably have heard about it. So DCC AI Plus enables you to give your donors the options as to how much they want to cover in fees and maximize the amount your donors commit to helping cover your, co your fundraising costs. So um, this, this rolled out on DCA Plus rolled out on September 1st. And the first 160 nonprofits who use DCC AI Plus reported an increase in the average DCC amount by 170%, increased DCC conversions by 25%, and an increase in DCC revenue by seven times, all by just enabling DCC AI Plus. So if you haven't yet, give it a try. We'll provide a link with much more detail about DCC AI Plus and how to enable it. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Awesome. So kind of wrapping up here, um, you want to be able to give your donors a quicker way to donate online, you know, all in an experience that they love and that's embeddable wherever you need it. So pair your Giving Tuesday campaign with GiveCloud's new fundraising forms. Now I'll hand it back to Kimberly for the Q&A portion of this. Thanks so much, Dan. I uh, love all that information. Now, one thing um, for folks who are attending today, um, in the next 24 hours or so, if you don't already have the new fundraising forms available within your GiveCloud admin, we'll make sure that it is available. So um, check back tomorrow and you should have availability to it if you don't already. Um, so just, just so you're aware of that. And now we're going to go over and we're going to switch to our Q&A um, time. So feel free to use that Q&A box to put in your questions and we'll go through those together. Cool. All right. So the first question we received is um, actually right here. So 
uh, best practices when integrating peer to peer with Giving Tuesday? Great question. Thanks so much for that. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're integrating peer to peer, um, you would definitely want to use a donation item because you want to be able to assign the item to your peer to peer settings. Dan, do you want to take over screen share yeah, just for sure. a moment and then that way I'll just actually stop so you can, we yeah. can show folks where it goes. It's actually a great question because I think we put a, we did do an example of this on our landing page. Oh, excellent. Thanks so much. That's great. Yeah. Um, great minds think alike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so uh, you guys are probably familiar with the functionality of peer to peer in Gift Cloud and, and, and how it works. And um, so Pairing is what Giving Tuesday is about making it visible, right? Giving your donors or supporters the opportunity to say, I want to donate and I want to do a peer to peer or, or, or either or, right? So wherever you are, so let, let's say like in this example, we've created a Giving Tuesday landing page. So if, if we were running a Giving Tuesday campaign and, you know, we sort of all marketing and so on, the, the, the link in our, um, that we share by email, social media and so on, will probably go directly to this, to this page where someone can get some more information and then they can choose to donate. Here, we've also included the option to start a fundraiser as well. So um, it, that option lives next year, donate now. Now, depending on how much you're pushing this option, maybe it's dropped down maybe a little bit further on the page. Maybe it's not next right next year, donate now, but it, it's about giving, um, giving that visibility to, um, to the ability to start a fundraiser. So your, your supporters know, oh, I can do this as well. To help answer it, Kimberly? That's excellent. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, next question is, can I have this feed into a goal on my main Giving Tuesday landing page? Thanks so much for that. So I'm assuming when you say that, you're probably talking about the, the new donation forms feeding into a, a goal tracker that's on a donation item. Yes, <laughs> that's, thank you for, for clarifying. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so um, goals and goal progress um, is not available today for the new giving forms. Um, so it's not something that can be automatically just thrown in there at the moment. Now, that's great feedback. And if yeah. there's any way at all, we could throw that in there. I'm definitely gonna take it to the team. Um, but for, for now, you know, if you wanted to, if you did want to have that, that running tally or total, um, it'll be something that you would kind of manually put into your, your landing page or wherever your, your donors are being taken to. And with, um, the reporting, you know, this, this reporting here that shows up on your fundraising form, this, this is in real time, right? So as donors donate, you're going to see this total revenue go up. You're going to see the views go up and show up. So while, while not, no, I'm not super ideal for today. Um, it's easy to get that stat and make it available. So maybe it's on an hourly or whatever basis for that day, you're updating the goal um, ma manually on, on that page, um, on your landing page. So not something available today, but we'll definitely take that into consideration. So thank you for that. Thanks so much for answering that. That's great. Awesome. Next question. Thank you also everyone for these great questions. Um, I think this is just like such a great question. I appreciate uh, the person who sent this in because it's just a great question overall is what is the best way to approach people regarding donations? We don't know them, but we'd like to convince them why they should. So I, I feel like that's like, gosh, every everybody has that question, eh? So um, thank you for that. Uh, so. Some pieces of advice. Well, when I first read this question, or when I, you know, when I think of this question, I think back to um, uh, American entrepreneur and YouTuber Marie Forleo. Now she is a business owner, um, but of course she talks about one really about how you can sell and promote yourself, your business, your nonprofit. So it doesn't matter which you know avenue of of business or nonprofit you're in her advice definitely is very helpful and and i'm i think about what she says about how like what are the timeless principles of selling and she talks about it being your messaging needs to be authentic it needs to be you know within your integrity and needs to come from your heart 
Um, and I think I can't agree more about when you're approaching people for donations. So, um, you know, because GiveCloud is a digital platform, definitely we're going to probably recommend a good place to ask folks for those donations is digitally, you know, whether that's um, social media platforms like TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, you know, you might be able to find it because you are driving digitally with GiveCloud, driving digitally and asking for donations on those platforms would be easier. Um, you know, you through those uh, spaces, you can create a sense of community, um, you know, with driving discourse around stories that you tell, um, you know, sharing with your supporters there, um, talking about your Giving Tuesday campaign there, and, and really building that discourse between your supporters and yourself through social media can help making those authentic asks easier. Um, one thing I, I think about where uh, you know, it's TikTok. This is my example where it's coming from, but what has a really strong discourse and gosh, it has one heck of a force is book talk. If anybody has ever heard of that, the hashtag book talk. Um, I was really looking forward to my library having, a, you know, one of my favorite authors books in, but the book talk got wind of her and now I have to wait 25 weeks for it. Um, so, you know, you cannot underestimate the power of just having authentic, uh, clear discourse and, you know, storytelling on social media, because it can really, um, really be beneficial. I, I hope that author is doing really great with all of that. Um, now, when you are speaking with the audience, though, you want to think about not just about what your story is, but um, what it is, what's in it for them, right? And I think, you know, where our new donation for us really display that is it's all about, you know, the person's um, impact, right? And that's really what's in it for them is like, how are they able to um, support you directly and see their impact and really leading with that message first um, is really key. Um, now, of course, we talked about this earlier too, storytelling. Um, so whether that's about your mission and how you came to be or who you are and what's, who's benefiting from your nonprofit, that of course can also be very inspiring and um, you know, drive people to give mm -hmm. as well. So ultimately speaking from your heart, um, mm -hmm. speaking your truth and um, keeping your, your supporters and donors in mind when you're talking to them is key. Yeah. Very long-winded answer. Well, Anything, Dan, that you can add? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, it's also important to remember that um, you know, while, while you're asking, well, while it's like a, it's a monetary ask that you're typically doing, right? Um, you're also, you're also providing a lot of value for your donors and your supporters because you're giving them an opportunity to get involved with a cause that they want to support, right? Like these are just individuals, like Dan by himself, but I can't do much by myself to, to have the impact that I want to have on whatever area it is that's there, near and there to my heart, right? But through your organization, I can partner with you and we can create that impact together. And that's really what you're what you're a part of what you're providing, right? That opportunity to be bought in with, with you and let's let's partner together and do this, right? So I think uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to add as well. Thanks so much, Dan. Cool. I hope that helps. And thanks again for that question. Um, next question is. Uh, who is the merchant account for Apple Pay? Um, just for some clarity, I think you, maybe you're asking like who provides Apple Pay currently with GiveCloud? Feel free to, to clarify your question in the QA section, that's totally cool. Um, if that's the case, um, Stripe is currently the payment gateway available for Apple Pay and Google Pay. Um, and I can actually include a link to how you can set that up mm -hmm. in our chat, just so you can see. Um, but yeah, Apple Pay and Google Pay are currently available with Stripe on our new fundraising experience. So um, if you are looking to utilize that, like how Dan showcased today, um, you can with the new fundraising experience if you uh, are using Stripe. Anything to add there, Dan? Um... 
Uh, the only thing I'd add is that um, just remember that the Apple Pay and Google Pay options only show up on supported devices and browsers, right? So if you're on an iPhone using Safari, you're going to get an Apple Pay option. If you're Android, Google Chrome, on your desktop as well, Google Chrome or Safari, you're going to get the Google Pay versus Apple Pay option. And if you don't see either, it's because it's uh, not a supported browser or, or device. We just got um, some clarification. So like safe save is a a merchant with dpa oh, we've got a donor perfect user here um uh, is apple pay the merchant provider it's just a form of payment so um thanks for the clarity there it's um it's a form of payment that was created by apple gosh i don't even know how many years ago it's just a way for um like securing quick checkout with Apple devices. So as Dan mentioned, you know, like folks can use it when they're using Safari and Apple supported devices. Um, but of course you won't see it on like a Android or Google device or mm -hmm. even like if you're not using um, a Safari browser on your, on your uh, computer, you won't see it there. So it's just a form of payment, just like Visa, MasterCard, you know, those are forms of payments. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. The uh, person who sent the message says, understand. Thank you so much. <laughs> cool. Okay. We've got um, just one last question here. Uh, so can I embed on my WordPress site? Thanks so much for that question. Um, Dan, do you mind uh, sharing your screen? Uh, you can share your screen, right? Yes. Yes, I can. Yes, I, I can. didn't uh, oh. take it away from you again. Um. <laughs> No, it's all good. I got it. Um, so, so yes, you, uh, these new giving forms can be embedded on your WordPress site or any other kind of site builder for that that matter. You know, whatever it is you're using, um, and and you still have that that kind of option of um, either you know linking people directly to that form, which will bring them back to your gift cloud site, right? So if you hit um, you can take them directly to the forum, you know, that that is your gift cloud URL, you're probably using a custom URL anyway, but the, the way you'd probably want to do it on an external site is to embed it so that people don't get uh, carried away from your site, right? They hit uh, donate now at the top right on the landing page of your external site, and this pop-up just kind of takes over the screen, right? And if they hit, yep, I'm going to and leave this and leave my donation. They're still on your site. They're still on your landing page. You're still on your WordPress site. They're not taken over to Give Cloud or somewhere else. So, yes, is the answer. Um, and if, if you're having any now, it, it's it's fairly standard kind of straightforward instructions for embedding. So um, hit embed here. You can choose if to do a button or a link, or if you have a developer and you want to go further the API. Um, and then it's just kind of copying the embed code and placing it on your site. So, yeah. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Um, all right. So I think that is all for today. Thanks to thank you. Thank you again for attending. Um, we hope we simplified the how so you can focus on your why. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to um, us at support at givecloud.com or chat that uh, or chat in by tapping the chat button in the bottom right hand corner of your GiveCloud admin. We are here for you Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For additional support, also check out our help center at help.givecloud.com. You can follow, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as our Instagram at GiveCloud. You can also take a deeper dive into online fundraising and how you can improve your online fundraising experience with our trust, uh, trust raising blog, which you can now access uh, directly at givecloud.com. You can rewatch this and share this recording as well by going to onboarding.givecloud slash sessions. I hope you have a wonderful day, world changers, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>